Hello, sports fans and football fans. One of the uh, rites of passage of the beginning of the next football season is the annual NFL draft. And uh, the first round of that draft was held last night on Thursday, April 20, what is it, 26th, 25th, 25th. And um, I'm going to do kind of my reaction to the first round. I'm not going to go through, you know, every person that was picked at every uh, pick during the first round. But I am going to hit some highlights and talk about uh, some of my reactions. Now, you know, I am a uh, Chicago Bears fan, so um, I was happy with the... Um, you know, with the uh, picks that the Bears had in the first round. Now, they had the first overall pick, and as was widely expected, they took Caleb Williams with that pick, quarterback out of USC. So, um, uh, I mean, obviously he was the, the hands-down choice by everybody. Everybody said this is the no-brainer. If you need a quarterback and you can get Caleb Williams, you take Caleb Williams. And that is exactly what Ryan Pace did. He took Caleb Williams. Now, we'll see how it works out. I mean, the Bears, obviously, I know as a Bears fan, they have a long history of never having a good quarterback or a what they call a franchise quarterback. Um, you know, Grossman was just kind of okay. Um, Cutler was, he was a good regular season quarterback, but he wasn't really, you know, what you would call a franchise quarterback. McMahon was an average quarterback on a team that had a great stifling defense. So, um, you know, the Bears have just never, they haven't had very good luck with um, quarterbacks. And don't even get me started on Bob Avellini and guys like that. So, uh, Caleb Williams is going to be a, um, a refreshing, um, you know, uh, departure from the regular with them. Uh, and I forgot Fields, and Fields, you know, I thought Fields was good. I Really, personally, I think what the Bears should have done was kept Fields and used their picks to build around him. Either trade that first pick for some more picks and build around Fields, or use that pick on, I don't know, a wide receiver like uh, Harrison Jr., who ended up going to the, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., ended up going to the uh, Cardinals uh, at pick number four. So there's a lot of things they could have done, and I thought they should have kept Fields because I think Fields is a solid quarterback. Now, maybe he's not a franchise quarterback, but he's a solid one. We'll see what happens with Caleb Williams he was great in college, but he had, you know, everybody making that jump from college to the pros, you never know. You never know how they're going to do it and how they're going to adjust and how well they're going to adjust, you know. Um, so, you know, just ask Bryce Young about that. So we'll see. Plus, I, my perception of Caleb Williams is he's a little bit of a prima donna. So... We'll see if he pans out. I hope, I certainly hope he does. Uh, and then at number nine, they got Rome Aduz, Adunze uh, for wi at wide receiver. So he'll have a, a target that he can throw to um, and, uh, you know, out of Washington. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, I mean, he also has Keenan Allen, but Keenan Allen is in the last year of a contract. So, you know, obviously there was some question as to whether uh, it would have been okay to just, you know, pass on getting a wide receiver, and so they did do that. <clears throat> we'll see what else they do. Um, but I think the, I think this makes the Bears a quasi-contender for next year, like maybe on the cusp. I don't know if they're quite a playoff team yet, but they uh, I think they could be close uh, to the playoffs. Um, obviously I think Caleb Williams, you have to assume he's going to go through some growing pains. Um, so, you know, we'll see how that works out. But, uh, I, you know, I hope he pans out and I hope that uh, it helps the Bears be a better team going forward. 
I like what they did, so let's move on. Uh, the uh, There were six quarterbacks drafted uh, in the first 12 picks of the draft, and that's the first time that's ever happened. Six quarterbacks in the first 12 picks. Um, and uh, it, that was, in addition to Caleb Williams, there was uh, Jalen Daniels, who went to the Washington Commanders. And Drake May went number three to the New England Patriots. Michael Penix Jr. went to Atlanta. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, and uh, J.J. McCarthy went to Minnesota at pick number 10. At pick number 12, Bo Nix went to the Denver Broncos. And, um, yeah, and then that was it. That was the six quarterbacks that were picked in the top 12. Um, so... Uh, let's get back to, for a minute, let's get back to Michael Penix Jr. I've been seeing a lot of negative, uh, negative Nellies out there, people scratch, you know, scratching their heads about the Atlanta Falcons taking Penix when they had, um, when, you know, they have Kirk Cousins. Now, here's my take on that. Kirk Cousins, first of all, he's coming off an Achilles injury. So you don't know, and he's 35 years old. So you don't know how durable he's going to be. Maybe there's a little bit of doubt whether he's going to start the season, although I think he'll start the season at quarterback for Atlanta. But how durable is he going to be? Is he going to be himself? Is he going to be the same old Kirk Cousins? Those are some questions. He's 35 years old, so he's not going to be there forever. He signed a four-year contract, two guaranteed, um, and uh, over the next two years he would make $90 million. So... You know, uh, they go out and they get Penix. I mean, I have no problem with it. But a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Penix is the kind of guy, especially since he's a little older than most quarterbacks coming out of the draft, he's the kind of guy that if you draft him, you start him right away. You don't sit him behind uh, Kirk Cousins or, you know, a veteran quarterback. Which I'm like, well, okay, but that's the situation that they've got, and I think they'll... I don't think there'll be a problem doing that. Um, the uh, Falcons apparently didn't tell Cousins until right before they drafted him, which did not make Cousins happy. But, of course, if you tell Cousins that ahead of time, there's a chance that it'll leak and then somebody else will take Penix. So if they don't think you're going to take them, if you know there's other teams that don't think you're going to take them, they wouldn't worry about it. But, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, you just don't want that information to get out. So you want to keep that close to the vest and you tell him right before you take Penix. I Now, I don't know why he's upset about it anyway. Like I said, he's making $90 million over the next two years guaranteed. So he's going to play if he's healthy. No matter what, he's going to play if he's healthy. So and I don't, I don't see why he's, you know, that um, wrapped around the axle about um, them taking Penix. So I have no problem with it. I think it was a good move by Atlanta. Now, yeah, there's some question. You could have, instead of taking Penix, you could have taken something else you need, wide receiver to help uh, Cousins, running back to help out Cousins, offensive line, edge rusher, there's other things that you could that you needed that you could have taken to help the team win now instead of Penix, who is going to help you win down the road, uh, supposedly at some point. But I still don't have a problem with it, and I don't know why so many people had a problem with it. So um, I, I I think it makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways. Um, J.G. McCarthy's going to Minnesota. Now, he will, uh, there's some question as to whether he'll even play, because he may sit behind uh, um, Darnold uh, for a while. And, you know, we'll see if that happens. Um, I think that there could be, in that case, there could be a legitimate competition between uh, Darnold and J.J. McCarthy. We'll see how Minnesota plays it. As opposed to at Atlanta, there's not going to be a competition. If Cousins is healthy, he'll be the quarterback. Um, so let's see what else we got. Marvin Harrison Jr. going to Arizona. Of course, they already have a quarterback, so they don't need. They didn't need to draft one. Um, and uh, 
you know, I, I think that that's a, that's a good move for them. And uh, we'll see if how that works out for them. And, uh, yeah, that's about, uh, you know, that's about it. Six, like I said, six quarterbacks taken in the first 12 makes history because that's never happened before in the NFL draft. And seven wide receivers in round one. That also is history making. That's never happened before either. So, um, as a Bears fan, to recap, I'm pretty happy with what they did. Um, I think they're moving in the right direction. I think they can be a solid team this year, at least, um, and maybe on the cusp of the playoffs. And we'll see if that happens. Um, and you know, and all the quarterback, good young quarterbacks. We'll see if that improves the quarterback play in the league uh, overall. Teams certainly needed it. New England needed one. They needed one badly, and they got Drake May. Um, the Washington Commanders needed one badly, and they got Jalen Daniels. So we'll see how it works out. But I like what I've seen uh, so far in the draft. And uh, what are your guys' reactions? What are some of your favorite teams? How did your favorite team do in the draft, do you think? Um, I know that the Bills traded... A pick or two away to move uh, to get to obtain more picks later on in the draft, um, most notably in the second round, which they did not have a second rounder before that. So we'll see how the Bills do. Um, so that's uh, those are my reactions to the first uh, the first night of the NFL draft. But let me know in the comments what you think. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, that always helps out. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel because, you know, I talk about real sports. I do Stratomatic, um, other types of game replays, lots of good content on the channel. But that is going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.